I streamed hardcore Minecraft for 30 days, clocking in at around 150 hours. Now, it has been roughly two years since I've played Minecraft, and I also never played hardcore, vanilla at least. So I thought, why not come back after a long break and give it a whirl? Day one. Ah yes, the start of a new world, the possibilities are endless. Also, I am using shaders and textures, if you'd like to check them out, the link is in the description, both are free. Right off the bat, one of the first things I prioritized was a bed and a shelter. If I can sleep through the night, I will. I also knew that I needed to get some sort of protection if I was going to survive at all, so I carefully went looking for some iron. After successfully getting full iron armor, I decided I should get a reliable food source, so I started a farm. And no, it's not as efficient as it could be. Like I said, it's been a while. Also with the new armor, I braved my first full night to try and get some bones so I could befriend a wolf in the area. I lived and it worked. Isn't he cute? Afterwards, I did some exploring and ended up finding a lava pool, so I decided to build a portal in it. Now, I never do this. This was a very odd thing for me to do, as I usually wait till I get a decent amount of diamonds, but I wanted soul sand for a water elevator, even though I wasn't going to make it a stream. Anyways, that's when I discovered that the shaders I run and the nether do not agree very well at all. After making sure my OBS didn't crash, I kept exploring and ended up finding a village. I marked the coordinates so I could kidnap, I mean... <clears throat> relocate the villagers later. The village did help me get some melons and a clutch supply of wheat. But now, it was time to really get to business. Diamond mining. And to do that, we gotta go down. Deep down. Where I first encountered the skulk. Now, I know what the deep dark looks like, but as to the mechanics or how the warden spawns is a complete mystery to me at this moment. He's not down here, is he? I will later end up doing a lot of research on this biome so I can navigate it safely though. While I was down here, I also had a rather interesting experience with some zombies. I'll just let you guys see for yourself. Whoa, 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 where did you guys even come from? What? <laughs> what? There must be a spawner. There's a spawner. There's no way there's not a spawner. There's no way that. What is going on? There's like 10. So yes, as I said 50 times, there was indeed a spawner around that corner. After clearing the spawner, it was time to get to the nitty gritty, strip mining. Now, I don't really know how the Minecraft community feels about strip mining, but my friends and I do not agree at all. Let me know, do you guys strip mine for diamonds or do you find them another way? Comment below, please solve this debate. But for me, strip mining ended up being a massive win, finding several veins and even two big veins right next to each other with a smaller third one close by. I didn't mine all of them though, as I wanted to get fortune 3, so I mined 5, made a pick, got obsidian, made an enchanting table, and pretty much spent the next 3 hours farming to get the enchanting table to full power. But once I did, you best believe I got fortune 3 and oh baby, I was balling with diamonds. I'm talking full set with 39 to spare. And that would conclude day 1. By the way... After I streamed this whole 30 day series in the middle of me editing this, Minecraft came out with an update that added more diamonds to the overworld. They don't give us a percentage or anything, they just say more diamonds in the overworld. Okay, sure. Day 2 in between streams, I did some research on portal traveling in the nether because I vaguely remembered that you could do that, but I needed to be exact if I wanted it to work. Before confirming the coordinates, a creeper had a rather interesting opportunity stuff. Go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. It's time to go to bed. Go to bed. Let's go to bed. He got close, but he fumbled the assassination attempt. Anyways, after confirming the coordinates, I built the portals, then linked them with a small railway system so I could move the villagers. The first one went really smooth. He got in the minecart and went all the way to the portal without a hitch. The second one, however, had different plans. For one thing, he was not interested in the minecart at all. In fact, he wanted to explore the nether. I mean, this guy is clearly the main character in this, not me. After taking an alternative route, I successfully got both villagers in what would become my trading hub. I also did not quite remember how to meet villagers and it took me a bit, but I finally got it. What? Why'd you get mad? You. What's your problem? Just because I'm watching?
I see a lot of hearts. Why are they getting mad? Why are you getting angry? Love. Love each other. There's not enough beds. Does, there, does, there, might, there might have to be a third bed for the child. God dang it. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I'll remember that. As I was expanding my villager trading hub, I realized I was going to need a somewhat reliable XP source, so I turned the mob spawner into a trap. Again, I didn't really know the best way to make one, so I just came up with one myself. Is it as efficient as it could be? No. But does it work? Yes. And that's what we care about. The rest of day two could honestly be summed up by farming, grinding, and trading. But by the end of day two, all my armor had protection for, and I felt like I could take this world to great heights. Day three. I'm ashamed and annoyed to admit that I spent nearly the first hour of day three just trying to get Unbreaking 3 from a villager. After finally getting Unbreaking 3, I slapped it on my chest plate and prepared to venture into the nether as I was going to look for netherite. Since I am a poor man with no gunpowder, I decided to use the next best explosive material, wool. Does anybody else find it hilarious that literal sheep's wool is material for essentially a nuclear bomb in what is supposed to be the underworld? After getting a moderate quantity of beds, it was time to go blow up the nether. I dug down and got to work. Now, using beds is way more hazardous than using TNT as one, it sets everything on fire. Two, it sets everything on fire. But you're also going through this one at a time. After using all the beds that I could carry, I had enough ancient debris for one ingot. And that's when the disappointment kicked in. Wait, what? Isn't this how you upgrade it? I thought you just put like your armor. Yeah, and then the netherite. So why am I not add smithing template? What does that mean? Isn't that just for like trim? Armor trim? I'm really confused right now. Okay, well, let me look this up because apparently I don't know how to get netherite anymore. So after complaining about the netherite change, it was time to venture into the nether once again in search of a bastion remnant. While I was out looking for a bastion, I ended up finding a fortress, so I grabbed some blaze rods because why wouldn't I? Now at this point, I'm getting pretty tired of being in the nether. I've been looking for hours, the neighbors are hostile, the weather sucks, and I decided it was time to head back home to at least get a mental break from this awful place, but the nether wanted to mess with me just one more time. Without... <gasps> Build, 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 build! Why is your netherrack not out? Build, man! Not like that! Not like that! Build! Build! Eat, 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 eat! Oh my god! Once I collected myself from the near-death experience I just had, I headed back home and continued to enchant my armor and tools further. Nearly two hours of trading, farming, and grinding later, I made some fire resistance potions to curb my anxiety and headed back to the nether as we never ended up finding a bastion and I still need that upgrade template. After finally finding one, I lucked out and was able to get an upgrade template without having to find another bastion. However, my expectations as to how these templates work would lead me to another disappointment. But now that we have the template, wait, does it use it once? Are those not reusable? Please tell me I'm just blind. Please tell me I just, please. They can be duplicated? Oh my God. So now I have to find another bastion remnant. I had just assumed that the template would work kind of like the banner patterns in the loom, you know? As long as you find it once, you can use it over and over again, right? Well, apparently, Minecraft wanted to add a crafting recipe to duplicate something. Something that has never been done before in a Minecraft update. As it would turn out, all the trims and the netherite template all have duplication recipes. You know, back in my day, the only duping we heard of was duplication glitch, not duplication recipe. But I digress. After coming to terms that I would just have to find another bastion and hope that we'd get a template, I went back into the nether for the fourth time. And eventually, I did find another bastion. But guess what guys? It didn't have any templates. Isn't that great? So that meant that I had to find another bastion. Which we did. Was it easy? No. Was it fun? No. Do I hate the nether? Yes! 
Luckily for us, this bastion had two templates to make up for the last one, but in reality, I just needed the one and I could dupe the rest. Now, I was exhausted mentally at this point and decided to just end stream at the bastion, and then I would get myself home off camera, ready to start the next stream. Day 4 since it was now the fourth day I was streaming this world, it seemed appropriate that I had an actual house to live in and not a cube. So I opened up the cube to give it more of an open hut kind of vibe and then just moved up the hill and got started on the house. It took several hours to get all the resources and to come up with a design I somewhat liked, but once I had it done, I just grinded, farmed, and traded. Nothing else too eventful happened, so on to the next day. Day 5 so I guess day 4 was the mental break from the nether because we go right back into it on day 5. Now that we had the templates and the knowledge that we can duplicate them, the only thing stopping me from netherite gear now was just ancient debris, so of course we go back down and started bed blasting. Don't think about that activity name too hard, okay? Unfortunately, our first batch of beds yielded the high number of zero ancient debris, so I just went home and prepared more beds. What else am I gonna do? After getting more beds, it was back to the nether for us, so off we went. We blasted and blasted and blasted. Lasted. After the second batch of beds, we had one ancient debris. Awesome! After three batches of beds, I finally had enough to turn something into netherite. Actually, I had enough to get both my leggings and boots into netherite. Yay! While I was getting more beds, I farmed and traded for a bit, and then on our fourth bed blasting expedition, we had enough to turn my helmet into netherite, thus completing my set of armor. But of course, we weren't really done yet. We still had to get our tools upgraded. So you know what that means. Fifth bed blasting expedition. And from that fifth expedition, we got enough ancient debris for our pickaxe, but only our pickaxe. Which means sixth expedition. After the sixth expedition, I had enough to get my axe and sword netherite. I still needed more netherite, but I hate the nether as we all know, and I wanted to fix my storage and explore the normal overworld for a bit. After all, duplicating those templates cost 7 diamonds a pop, so it wouldn't hurt to find any while I was exploring. Let's just say I found a couple. I also found a mine shaft, which we explored for a while, but ultimately I don't think we ended up finding anything too useful there. Once we had our fill for exploring, I headed back home, farmed and traded a tad, and ended day 5 there. Day 6 Honestly, the first like half hour of the stream, I was farming and trading again. It's very important, okay? It's how I get my enchantments for my armor and tools, alright? It needs to be done. Now, moving on. This wouldn't be a Minecraft video if I didn't do some mining off camera. I didn't mine any diamonds or anything, but I ended up finding something that scared me to my core. There it is. After hearing that shriek off camera, I stopped mining and researched everything I could about the warden so I would be prepared for it on stream. Since I had no real way of uncovering the skulk at the time, I just went home and let it be. I couldn't just sit at base anymore though, so I decided to explore some more caves. And we got several, and I mean several, diamond veins. They added more to the game? Really? I mean, like, I get the armor trims and whatnot, but really? Like, they don't seem that hard to get, but... Okay, man. After my resupply of diamonds, I thought of a really easy achievement to get, so I went to the nether to stare at a gas with a spyglass. And I guess my itch for exploring wasn't satisfied, because I went around looking at stuff again. I ended up finding this cave that honestly felt like a clickbait video. It felt like it was gonna lead nowhere, but it just kept going and going, bit by bit. And actually ended up uncovering an ancient city, which excited me, but also terrified me. I was just glad I did my research on the warden and his mechanics beforehand. I still didn't know the best method of travel though, and I only had the wool carpets from when I first heard the shrieker in my strip mine. I do come back with the wool later, which is a big help. In my couple warning shrieks, I was able to loot two chests, one of which gave me the silence armor trim. And I didn't know it at the time, but that armor trim is the rarest armor trim in the game, with only a 1.2% spawn rate. And it also happened to be in one of the two chests I looked inside. Actually crazy. Look at my innocent self. Doesn't realize just how lucky I really am. After preparing a bit more for the ancient city, I decided I should head back and loot a bit more since the shrieker counters probably went down once or twice. For those that don't know, you get three warning shrieks and on the fourth one the warden spawns, but every 10 minutes your shrieker counter will go down by one. 
thus giving you another warning. Anyways, while I was down here, I ended up finding one of my new favorite enchantments, Swift Sneak. Honestly, I didn't know how much I wanted that enchantment until I had it. After filling up my under chest and my inventory with loot from this place, it was time to head home. That's when I got to first experience the power of Swift Sneak. I also switched armor trims to the ward armor trimmed and used gold, and honestly, I like it a lot more than what I had before. Also, does anyone else think that it would be a pretty dope side bonus to have piglins not attack you if you're fully trimmed with gold? I mean, the logic tracks, just saying. Anyways, I was in the nether for a bit to get some startup lava from my lava farm. I needed reusable energy because I was going to be smelting a lot of sand into glass for a building project I had in mind. While I was letting the sand smelt, I built up a bad omen effect and tried to do a raid. Keyword being tried because for the life of me, I could not find where this hidden illager was. So I couldn't complete it. Instead, I went to go grab a bunch of kelp as it was going to be needed for my water elevator that I mentioned all the way back on day one. Remember that? After grabbing the kelp, I kept exploring and found a desert village with a camel. Unfortunately, it was very very tedious to get him across water. I mean, that should be obvious. But once I got him on the mainland, I rode him all the way home and that would be our stopping point for day six. Day seven. I wasn't kidding when I said I felt like I could take this world to great heights. We started off day seven with building a giant water elevator. So we laid down the frame with glass and I was so nervous that one misinput could end up with me dying in seconds. I'm not sure how far I can fall with Feather Falling 4 and Prot 4, but I did not want to find out. After laying down the framework, it was time to place water all the way down, but I needed to fill it with kelp before the soul sand could kick you up. So that's what I did. I made sure to have a way down first before I completely finished it. But why do I want a water elevator that takes me to the skies? That's a good question. I'm trying to recreate one of my favorite building projects I started in a world with my buddies that I never finished, a sky village on a sky island. Anyways, once you get to the top, you're sort of put under this weird metaphysical building structure that took me ages to recreate. It's sort of the hub of the island. I don't know if hub is really the right word, but we're going to go with it. So I made my hub and then dedicated some grass for flowers later on and then got to work on the first villager house. Now, I would have loved to have built this out of the new cherry tree, but I never found a cherry grove biome and and none of the wandering traders sold the saplings, so I just decided to use dark oak and stone bricks. Once I had the first house built, it was time to get some villagers up here to live in it. I think I probably could have used villager job blocks for moving them around, but instead I chose to move them at night time with beds because I'm very intelligent. I just needed to move two, and then they can breed the uh, entire rest of the island. I then started a little quarry for stone for expanding the island, and once I had enough, I built a second villager house and built a farm up there for one of the new villagers. I was doing it wrong, but I'll learn that later. After the long experience of starting a foundation for a floating village, I switched gears and started to prepare for the ender dragon fight. Turns out I didn't have enough blaze rod, so I had to go grab some. Once I had enough, I made some slow falling potions and made my way to the stronghold. You might be asking why I waited so long to fight the dragon when he's really not that difficult, and I guess in my mind it felt cool to fight him after one full week of streaming, so once we got there, we ended stream and would open to fight the ender dragon on day 8. In between streams, I made a custom skin of myself. I will later change my shirt to black, because I just wear black shirts more. But for the time being, it'll be blue. I think I did a pretty good job, though, if I do say so myself. But enough dilly-dallying, it was time to fight the Ender Dragon. Yes, we did it. The Ender Dragon's been killed. So, yeah, nothing too special. He went down with no problems. But just because he wasn't a problem doesn't mean I didn't run into a problem. Can I Ender Pearl that? Can I really? Slow falling just to be safe. Uh oh. <gasps> just keep. Oh no, dude. Pearl that way. Please, please, please. No! No, 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 no! No! This is how I die? I'm dead! I'm dead! 
Oh no. Don't even log back in. Yeah, technically I haven't died yet, you know? Technically speaking, I haven't died. Okay, I'm still alive. I don't know why you guys are saying rip. But the next time I log in, yeah, I'll die. Dude, I thought slow falling like worked better than that. I felt like I was falling so fast. Oh, uh, I'm just so embarrassed. Like now what? And now I have to start another hardcore world. All right, let's get this over with. Let's spectate the world. So yeah, unfortunately, my first world ends with me falling into the void after a full week of streaming. I took one good look at the world that I had built and then I moved on and started anew. Someone suggested that I name the world hashtag enderpearl better next time, and I ran with it. It would serve as a warning every time I loaded up. Surprisingly, I wasn't even that upset about losing the first world. I mean, don't most people lose their first hardcore world anyways? Plus, I actually really wanted to build out of the new cherry wood and build my sky island out of it too, so it might be just what I needed. But we're back to square zero once again. Fortunately, there is a village right by my spawn with the blacksmith so i got to get a jump start on this world once we looted it we pretty much do what we normally do get some iron get some armor get some diamonds find a cherry biome wait what so we ended up finding a cherry grove on the first stream of this new world guys i I think I was supposed to die in that last world after grabbing an unhealthy amount of cherry logs i went home for about 12 seconds. Once I cleared my inventory, I went right back into the caves and strip mine for a bit. I was gonna be mixing the cherry wood with deep slate for most of my build so I could get building material while looking for diamonds. It's a win-win. Once I felt content with the amount of deep slate and wood I had, I headed back to the village to build my house. I just love the look of the cherry wood and deep slate. They took too long to add the cherry trees, to be honest. Now then, I needed fortune three because I had found several diamonds while down below, but didn't want to mine them. Instead of taking the enchantment table route, I kept placing lecterns until I got a librarian that would sell it to me. Once I finally got it, I slapped it on a pick and went to go mine the diamonds I found. Luckily, I remembered to screenshot the so I wouldn't forget. After a tiny bit of strip mining, I returned home with enough diamonds to get me a full set with 10 to spare. Yes, I managed to get full diamond armor in one stream again. Afterwards, I just tended to the farms because, as we're all well aware at this point, farming is important. But overall, even though we lost our first world, our second world wasn't looking all that bad. Nine. Would you believe me if I said the first hour was basically farming? I knew you would, but my sugarcane farm is way better than it was in the last world, okay? It's not automatic or anything fancy like that, but I do get a higher yield. Once the farm was a decent size, I switched gears to building the villager trading hub. I was pretty determined to use the cherry wood for basically everything, and deep slate just happens to complement it really well. So you'll be seeing a lot of that from now on. After moving some villagers and fixing their trades, I... Oh, actually, you know what? Looking back at this, I actually farmed and traded for several hours, so... Yeah, um... At some point, though, I did spend some time making the place look a bit nicer. I put an enchanting table in a tree and connected the farm, the trading hub, and my house. Once I felt satisfied with tidying up the place, I ventured into the nether for some XP from nether quartz. Once I got back, I checkerboarded my floor and enchanted. Then I went to the nether to get XP again and enchanted again. I wouldn't go back to the nether afterwards, though. Instead, I went to the caves to grab some resources that I was a bit short on. We ended up discovering a mine shaft, and honestly, this mine shaft scared the crap out of me. It's dangling high up in a cave and I don't have feather falling quite yet so I was nervous I could lose this world too. Luckily nothing too unfortunate came about and we got some melon seeds from it so it was worth it. I guess. After stocking up on several resources I went home and decided to start a lava farm now so I wouldn't have to worry about coal in the future. Then you know farmed and ended day nine. Day ten. So I never actually found anything too helpful in the nether while I was harvesting nether quartz, so we headed back in on day 10 to find something, anything. Luckily, it didn't actually take us that long to find a fortress. We didn't get any other skeleton skulls, but we did stock up on blaze rods. Once I got back, I made a little potion brewing area in the tree, and then I headed back into the nether. 
mostly to trade with Piglin since I didn't really remember what all you could get from them. After trading a full stack of gold, I went home and started to make a basement for storage because my current storage situation was not great to say the least. Before I could finish it, however, an Illager scouting party embedded itself into the village nearby. Whoa, 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 what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing here? They're right next to a village. They're right next to a village, man. I basically, as soon as I kill them, it's gonna start a raid. What? Yeah, well, they're like right next to the village. Where's your flag guy? I know you have a flag guy. The flag guy embedded himself like in the village. He's like, we're starting a raid. I don't care. We're starting a raid. Aww. Yep, there we go. We didn't we didn't really have a choice with that one. Now I thought the wave count was based on how high your bad omen was, but apparently it's based on your difficulty. Let's just say we didn't save the villagers. Actually, we were lucky to survive at all. We did manage to grab ourselves a totem of undying though, so it wasn't all bad. Plus the villagers in my trading hub survived. This time. Then I went back and forth between the nether for XP, completed my basement, and expanded the villager trading hub to two stories. I hope it goes without saying that I also farmed. Day 11. Okay, do I even need to mention the farming at this point, or can you just expect me to do it? Good. No more mentioning of farming from here on out. Now that we got that out of the way, we went to the nether in search of a bastion. If I was going to die, it would be in a bastion. And I would rather die and start a new world before I get the netherite to upgrade my armor. What was surprising was we bumped into ancient debris just by trying to reach a new area in the nether. However, I soon discovered that our nether kind of sucks in terms of exploration at least. We were going to have to use alternative methods of travel as lava was separating everything. Good thing I played during the nether update and remembered how the work. After traversing just a bit of lava, we did end up finding ourselves a bastion. But not just any bastion, the treasure bastion. The one that's guaranteed to have the template, which means I could get what I need right here, right now. No need to look for more. I do have a fear of the piglins though, especially the brute, so I took my time and sniped them down one by one, slowly and safely making my way to the chest in this place. Once I made my way to the bottom, I grabbed the netherite template and ingot and the gold of course and got out of that scary place. I hopped on a strider and crossed the lake of fire then while I was mining my way back to the portal I found two more ancient debris meaning I could upgrade two pieces of armor when I got home. The luck on this world has actually been nuts. Anyways I duplicated the templates, upgraded my chest plate and leggings and also applied the snout armor trim on my chest plate with redstone. It looks weird with the diamond but it'll look cool later I promise. Since I just spent like 21 diamonds on my armor I knew I was going to need more at some point so we ventured around looking for a big open cave that we haven't explored yet. I found quite the cave and it also had a mine shaft. I know mine shafts can run pretty big but I'm not sure if it's the same one as earlier or not but that hardly matters. We did manage to score a god apple and in case you don't know what I'm talking about I'm referring to the enchanted golden apple I just call it the god apple. Anyways once I got Oh, only a stack and three quarters worth of diamonds along with plenty of deep slate I headed back to base. After doing the obvious, I decided it was time to go blow up the nether. And with the amount of ancient debris I uncovered on our first bed blasting expedition combined with the leftover scraps I had, gave me enough to upgrade my last two pieces of armor to netherite. I then trimmed my armor set fully with redstone and the snout armor trim and I really liked it. But I will be changing the helmet because you can only see it on the side of the helmet, which we're hardly gonna see so that's gotta go. But other than that, I really like the look of the armor. Since we still need to upgrade our tools, I kept looking for ancient debris. On our second expedition, we found one, and on our third expedition, we found zero. So I took it as a sign to end stream there once I got back home. Day 12. Day 12 is a pretty big day. We get a lot done. Are you ready? We start off by heading back into the nether to look for ancient debris cause my tools still need to be upgraded. Our fourth bed blasting expedition uncovered seven ancient debris so we combined them with the one I had left over and upgraded my pick and my axe. Our fifth bed blasting expedition also yielded us seven ancient debris. How about that? I didn't quite have enough for my shovel and sword so I just chose my shovel and headed back into the nether. On our sixth bed blasting expedition we got eight ancient debris. I actually didn't upgrade any tools this time as I wanted to see if fully enchanting on diamond would be cheaper than netherite. Afterwards I wandered the overworld for a bit and eventually found myself just digging a staircase down. I saw some deep dark around the coordinates from when I was in the caves before but the path kind of went cold so I wanted to see if there was more and I was right. We discovered 
an ancient city. Way sooner than we did on our first world. I mostly just wanted swift sneak and once I got that I headed home because I actually was not that prepared to loot this place. So after we put swift sneak on and prepared a bit more we headed back to the ancient city. While I was here I saw something very confusing. Can anyone explain as to what is happening? I assume the skulk vine is keeping the lava from flowing, but why is the wool not catching fire? Is the skulk really preventing the wool from burning? From lava? Whatever man, best not to think too hard I guess. After looting the place and setting just a couple shriekers off, we went back to base to assess the loot. We got the other side music disc which is a banger and the ward armor trim along with a few god apples. I applied the ward armor trim to my helmet and I think it makes my armor set look way better. Once I did that though, I thought it was about time that I start my main project again, the Sky Village, which I'm going to refer to as Sky Guard from now on. It's like Midgard, but it's in the sky. Anyways, I went and got a lot of sand. Once I got a lot of sand, I let it smelt and then I had to get a lot of kelp. Once I got a lot of kelp, I headed home and looked around for a good spot for Skyguard to rest. I chose over a lake because I thought it would look cool and it wasn't too far from base, so why not? Making the glass elevator was a lot less nerve wracking this time around as I could basically fall anywhere and I would live because I would just fall into water. But I also had a totem, so I was extra safe. While I was getting the foundation of Skyguard built, I was also not sleeping through the night so we could get phantoms to spawn in. Since it would take a while, I went mining for deep slate because I needed more anyways. Once we got the membranes, we made slow falling potions and prepared for the ender dragon fight again. Even though I had serious trust issues with slow falling, I knew it'd be better to have it than to not have it at all. Once we felt prepared, we ventured off, found the stronghold, found the portal, and would fight the ender dragon at the beginning of day 13. Day 13? Lucky day 13, let's get it. The ender dragon wasn't really a problem for us in the first place. It was our stupidity after the fact that got us killed. So once we killed him, we just had to be extra careful and less dumb. And thankfully, I was. We found an end city and actually managed to reach it before dying. Luckily, it had an end ship, so I didn't have to find any more either. I could just grab the elytra and be on my merry way. That was the main thing I was grabbing, as most of the loot here was pretty weak compared to what I have now. Oh, but the shulker boxes are going to be a great help. After carefully making our way all the way back home, I slapped mending and unbreaking three on the elytra so I could fly to my heart's content. And the elytra just makes it way easier and faster to get to Skyguard. I finished constructing my hub for Skyguard and then we went flying around looking for mountains that could indicate an ancient city, cause there was more loot that we could get but didn't get from ours. We weren't so lucky this time around, but I did end up finding some diamonds after strip mining for a bit, maybe more than some. On my way back home from the mining trip, I saw an illager outpost so I decided to get a bad omen effect since I was a bit more prepared for a raid this time. Unfortunately, the raiders did end up killing like the entire first floor of my villager trading hub. So now I only had like four villagers left. Good thing I got most of my enchantments taken care of already. We did manage to stock up on quite a few totems, but at what cost? Anyways, after the whole ruckus, we put up a diamond set of armor for decoration and continued to develop Skyguard. At some point during construction, I realized it would be way better if I had scaffolding, so I quickly flew to a jungle, grabbed some bamboo, planted some bamboo, then made some scaffolding and continued to make the first villager trading house a Skyguard. Once I had the basic structure of the first house done, I started to transport two villagers. Unfortunately, Skyguard is far enough from base to make a stop halfway and continue moving the next night. During the day, we spoke Spoofed up the house a bit more and once it hit night we were back to moving the villagers. It wasn't the easiest nor the cleanest transportation mission, but we got it done. Since I didn't want to move anyone else up here, these two would be the founding civilians of Skyguard and would populate the place for me. Once the reproducing began, I began on making another house for Skyguard and her people. Also chat chose to name the founding villagers Kelly and Billy. After that, I got some gunpowder from some creepers and then headed into the nether to grab magma blocks for a gas farm I was going to make because killing creepers during the night was not it. Once I got back safe and sound, I ended day 13 there. Day 14? We get a little cuckoo crazy on day 14. What I'm doing right now isn't that crazy, just fully enchanting my sword from the Ender Dragon XP and then finally upgrading it to Netherite. But after that, we start to exploit the game a little. We head to the top of the nether so I can do a weird trick where you get on top of the nether roof in multi-purpose area. For today's purpose, we are just linking my overworld portal to the new one on top of the roof and we built a gas farm. Now, 
Don't get angry with me, okay? I'm being honest here. I actually built the gas farm in the wrong biome. So after stream off camera, I installed a world edit mod and moved the gas farm to the biome that it's supposed to be in. I did nothing else and I never touched the mod again. So the gas farm was for gunpowder and gas tiers, but I still needed an actual good XP farm. And the best XP farms are Enderman farms. And I I hated every second of building this Enderman farm. I hate being this close to the void man, especially considering how we died the first time. Every moment down here was anxiety filled torture, but we dealt with the fear and developed our XP farm and it works amazingly. I don't think I've ever made an XP farm this good myself before, so I was pretty happy. Once that was up and running, I got to work on making a third house for more villagers. I knew I wanted some trident enchantments since that was realistically the last weapon that I would actually use that needed to be upgraded. The villagers wanted to be rather stingy with their trident enchantments though, and let's just say I did not have a fun time. Any day! Any day, man. Any day you feel like taking the job, go for it. Oh, thanks. Thanks for selling me nothing. Thanks for making me wait just to see absolutely nothing. Appreciate that. How about you actually sell me something good for once? Something you've never sold me before, huh? But once I got the enchantments I needed, I went to go get XP, and then I forgot to upgrade my trident and ended day 14. Welp. Day 15... So I guess I should start by saying I had built another farm off camera, an iron farm. It was a hassle and I didn't want to do it live, okay? But now that you know, let's get on with day 15. I had spent some time at the gas farm and accumulated enough tears to fight the ender dragon a few times. I wanted to fight him all 20 times to spawn all the portals in. We didn't fight him all 20 times today though, but we'll be back. After killing the Ender Dragon four times, I go mining for Deep Slate, which uncovers us some diamonds. Seriously, just use Deep Slate as a part of your buildings, and you'll always have diamonds because of it. Then we made some final touches to the Iron Farm, and then went to fight the Ender Dragon four more times. After all the fighting, I wanted to change a pace, so we head back to Skyguard to build another house. I was then doing some pretty mundane tasks for a while, but at some point I got to meet these two chill drowned. Yeah, he's not even attacking me. We're best friends. Best buddies. They really just don't care. After essentially running errands in the world, I wanted to put my storage problems to rest, so I focused on expanding Skyguard and constructing a massive building dedicated to storage. Before I finished the building though, I got another bad omen effect from a scouting party and I started another raid. This one would actually be quite easy as none of the raiders could spawn on Skyguard, so I can just snipe them from it. Once we stocked up on even more totems, we got back to building our storage building. Building our storage building. <laughs> After a while of constructing, I wanted to change pace back to fighting the Ender Dragon so we kill him another two times. And then it's back to mining Deep Slate for us because we needed it for a storage building. And yes, we did find more diamonds. In order to fully finish our storage building, however, we would need to go grab some shroom light in the nether. And so we did. With everything I needed, I finally finished my storage building, which also doubled as a normal nether portal. You know, one that doesn't take us straight to the nether roof. Anyways, once our storage building was done, we ended day 15 there. Day 16. So I FK'd a bit more at the gas farm off camera so I could stockpile on gunpowder and gas tiers, and thankfully we have just enough gas tiers to fight the Ender Dragon the last nine times. But first, I used the gunpowder to make TNT because I'm not gonna lie, I really wanted another netherite set of armor, just for decoration. So we venture off into the nether in hopes of ancient debris. I must say, it's way easier to do this with TNT than beds. The ability to line up a long line of TNT and blow it all up at once or as a chain is so much faster than going bed by bed and there isn't a bunch of fire left over from the explosion, so that's a pretty nice bonus. We ended up getting 8 ancient debris from this, so that was 2 pieces of armor we can make. Once I made the chest plate and leggings, I went to the end to fight the dragon 6 more times, meaning we just had 3 portals left open. After bullying the ender dragon, I flew around the end waste and looted a couple end cities. Now most of the loot was meh, but I honestly just wanted purple blocks since it was needed for the spire armor trim duplication recipe. Jeez, what a mouthful. That and you can't have too many shulker boxes. When I got home, I trimmed the two pieces of netherite I had made and I could see how good it would look when I would get it done. I then switched gears back to my storage building. You see, 
The building itself was done, but not the storage inside the building. So I spent a somewhat decent amount of time cutting down trees for chests, and once I felt satisfied with the amount of chests I had, I may or may not have spawned in some invisible item frames. I threw away the materials that it would take to craft it, so I didn't just spawn something in and not pay the price for it, but I just really wanted invisible item frames, man. They make the storage look so much cleaner. After spending quite a bit of time setting up my storage, I had the urge for something interesting, so we go into the nether to fly around a bit and see if we can spot any new bastions or fortresses to loot. We did find a bastion, but we didn't really get anything noteworthy besides ancient debris. We also found a fortress, so I grabbed some extra blaze rods and tried to get some weather skeleton skulls, but we weren't so lucky. We kept exploring and found another bastion, which did give us a free template, but we didn't get pig step or anything. After the bastion, I went back to the fortress where I did get my first wither skeleton skull. Then, I found a third bastion. I'm not even joking. We didn't get all three wither skeleton skulls from this nether trip, but what we did get is enough ancient debris from the bastions to complete my decorative netherite set. I fully trimmed it, of course, and it looks amazing, and then I ended day 16 by killing the ender dragon the last three times that I needed. Day 17... A big portion of day 17 was me building my smeltery and me getting the materials to build my smeltery. While I was doing that, I was also breeding chickens so we could get a lot of eggs so we could get chickens to spawn for the wither fight. We needed the wither roses because it'll improve our gas farm dramatically. I've just been using powdered snow and it works, but it's so slow. Anyways, once the structure was built, we still needed to set it up in order for it to be an actual smeltery. So we go looking around for some dripstone so I can turn the place into a massive lava farm with furnaces, smokers, and blast furnaces out the wazoo on the other side. I would never end up using this to its fullest potential, but I love the way it looks. Also, I never have to use coal for fuel ever again. The chickens still hadn't produced the amount of eggs that I wanted, so to pass time, I expanded Skyguard and made two 9x9 farms. At some point, though, we did get enough eggs, so I brought a full shulker box of eggs and went to the end to fight the wither. I didn't care if the end got blown up, so I thought it'd be a good spot. Chat also showed me a glitch where you can trap the wither in the bedrock portal, but unfortunately for me, shooting him once freed him of the glitch and I had to fight him normally, but it was no big deal. I did panic and use a god apple though. Anyways, back at Skyguard, we start pooling all of our resources to try and get a beacon. I didn't remember how to build one and I definitely spent way too much time trying to figure it out, but once I had my plots of land built on Skyguard and got the beacon fully powered, I ended day 17 there. Day 2! So we had a new plot of land left over from day 17 stream, so we start off day 18 by adding a new house to it. I was going to have farmers live here since it is right next to the 9x9 farms. What I didn't realize was that I had to tweak the farms just a tad because the way that I had built them prevented it from being automatic. But once we made the few adjustments, it was working just fine. Also, occasionally some drowned show up from the water elevator. Is that a baby? Is the baby chill? Is the baby peaceful? There's two babies? What? What? During the day, they're peaceful and chill, so for the most part, I just kind of let them do whatever. Anyways, once I had the automatic farms up and running, I leveled up Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. They're both clerics. Do you get it? Walter, put your Bruin stand away, Walter. I'm not buying potions off you right now, Walter. I am the one who cooks potions. You're not cooking anymore, Walter. Go back to bed, Walter. Afterwards, I added a few new jobs to the island that I was missing, since for the most part, I was just getting enchantments from librarians. But I added a butcher, toolsmith, and armorer. I also can't believe that the toolsmith and armorer buy four iron for an emerald. We have an iron farm. They both take iron. They both take iron. They both take it. They both take iron what we have infinite emeralds we have infinite emeralds we have an iron farm which basically just means we have an emerald farm every golem that dies is equal to one emerald dang once i sold a moderate quantity of iron i got bored and decided to look for some buried treasure since at one point i did end up finding a map i love the elytra it's just so 
great. A bit of digging later and we got our buried treasure. It honestly doesn't matter that much though because I don't think I ever ended up building a conduit but whatever. After the buried treasure map adventure we go off to loot an underwater ocean monument because there was one that wasn't too far from base. I don't think I really needed to use this god apple here but I did anyways. I also didn't bring my trident because my brain small so I was definitely not going about this the right way but nonetheless we got the gold and we found two sponge rooms so overall not bad. Now then, I went to the nether to travel really far because I wanted an ancient city, damn it. We go out super far and look and look and look. We did find the deep dark, just no ancient city. We didn't find anything at these extreme coordinates, so I went home, organized the inventory, and went to check out another set of extreme coordinates. When I say extreme, I just mean really far. It's 2,000 blocks in the nether, so around 16,000 blocks in the overworld. Anyways, we search the hills and dig, but no luck. Now this was more so on you guys, as chat started to show coordinates to an ancient city near where I was located, so, um, yeah. We found an ancient city! Thanks guys! Honestly though, the loot was not great. We did manage to get two more god apples though, so not a complete waste of time. But once I got back home, I loot dumped, questioned my decisions, and ended day 18 there. Day 19. You should probably expect me to do something on my island from here on out because this is my main beauty. We expanded Skyguard to hold another automatic farm. This time it would be carrots instead of potatoes. Then I went to get some resources for building the house. Then I built the house, moved some villagers, and the farm works great. That's not the only thing I added though, as I would make a new plot of land for another house. While I was doing that, I was also sprucing up Skyguard, making it look just a little nicer. Hey, they vibing! Hey, dancing. Yeah, me too. Oh my god, another one showed up. Yeah, let's have a party. We love Pickstead. Me and the homies love to dance to Pickstead. No! Gerald! Go back in the shade, Gerald. Gerald! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Why are you still burning? Why are you still burning? Oh, stop, 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 stop. Stop! Gerald, it's not worth it! It's not worth it, Gerald! Dude, wait, you know what? I tried. I tried. Anyways, once we got the next house built, I saw it as an opportunity for more of the villager jobs, so I added a cartographer and weaponsmith. But for the time being, the cartographer is actually who we want, as he can sell us a map to a woodland mansion, which we haven't been able to find yet, even with the elytra. But once we got a confirmed location for one, we headed to it and looted it. Although I'm gonna be honest, I think I mostly just looted the totems of Undying from the Evokers. I don't think I checked many chests, but oh well. Also, those flying spear things hurt, man. Oh my god, I hate those things. We made it out alive though, thank goodness. And when we got back home, I made another plot of land on Skyguard for another villager house. This house is going to contain the last four villager jobs that I didn't have. I never ended up doing much with them, but... At least they're here. After a while of just leveling villagers up and decorating the place, I decided, you know what? It's time I remove the water elevator. The island was getting so big that the water elevator was starting to look like a pillar of foundation for the island, but I didn't want Skyguard to be placed on something. I wanted it to be a floating island, and it ain't floating if it's resting on something. So we took it down and removed the dirt path towards it as well, and now it looks like a floating island. Afterwards, I bought full diamond sets of armor from the armorer because I wanted to turn them all into netherite, each with their own unique trim and trim color. Then I went to the nether to stock up on some blackstone since I knew I would need it for a project I had in mind. Then I pondered Skyguard and ended day 19. Day 20. On day 20, someone suggests that I build a snowman, and it made me realize I never really made any golems or befriended any mobs in this world yet, so I thought, why not? We built him, freed him of his helmet, and we became best friends. For about five minutes. Hey, dude. Alright, should we name him? Let's name him, guys. What's his name? What's the snowman's name? I better not see Frosty. That is so cliche. Bart. <laughs> Zook. He needs a derpy name. Yeah, Frosty did melt. That is canonical. That is canonical Frosty lore. Oh my god, the rain just instantly killed him. Wow. Okay, no name for him. Oh, rip in peace. Oh, rip in peace. We didn't even give him a name yet. All right, well. Um. All right, bye.
So yeah, thanks Rain for killing the only friend I ever had. I was so upset about losing my unnamed snowman slash best friend that I pretty much dedicated this entire livestream to expanding Skyguard as my uh, preferred method of mourning and grieving. Oh, and getting the resources to expand Skyguard, of course. I'm being dead ass with you, by the way. We get dirt, we place dirt. We get deep slate, we place deep slate. It's that simple. We did this for hours. I wanted to wrap the entire island in a cherry forest and I gotta say, it looks goddamn beautiful. I'm still not done with Skyguard quite yet, but regardless, we ended day 20 there. Day 21. So I had four patches of land on Skyguard that were dedicated to beacons once I could build them, but I couldn't build them, so we set off to solve that problem by fighting a bunch of wither skeletons. I really didn't want to set up a whole wither skeleton farm because from what I've seen, they are a pain in the ass to make, so instead, I just started building a platform connected to the fortress made out of nether brick, basically just adding more possible spawn points for the wither skeletons. This trick does unfortunately attract a lot of blazes though. After spending like an hour of farming skulls, we end up with six, meaning two fights, meaning two beacons. I didn't want to have to use a god apple or game glitches this time, so instead I actually prepared for the fights and brewed some strength and regen potions. Everything went smoothly and no god apples were injured. After fully powering one beacon, I traded for a bit. This is pretty messed up when I think about it. I'm literally selling them the food that they harvest. I don't even know how to follow up on a sentence like that, so I'm just going to talk about what we did next, which was get dirt and place dirt for a while actually i was going to build a new house for myself on skyguard and i wanted a big plot of land for some other builds i had in mind once i had the plot of land made i needed to get resources for the house so we gathered up a bunch of wood and a bunch of deep slate and we also went to the nether for shroom light because we needed that too throw in some pink stained glass and cherry leaves and my house was basically done not too long after a scouting party spawned in skyguard and after killing them we started a raid the waves could actually spawn on top of Skyguard too. We were legitimately being invaded. Thankfully, the very last wave spawned underneath, and then I just kind of did some strafing runs with the Elytra, taking them out one by one. Whoa, 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 whoa! Tried and throw an MF. -er. Wait, you guys want to blow up? Wow, there are so many mobs here. It's insane. What is happening? Also, apparently, zombies can use your totems. Oh my, that zombie picked up a totem. That zombie picked up a totem, dead ass. Is he gonna use my totem? Is the zombie gonna use my totem? Don't use it, please. He actually used the totem. No way. So just be aware of that fact. I guess. After the raid, I finished setting up the enchanting table in my house, sold some iron, and ended day 21 there. Day 22. We start day 22 with some classic shenanigans. We're going to break bedrock. The reason why is because I was getting really tired of navigating the different terrain and biomes of the nether, but if I can go to the coordinates of the fortress on top of the nether and break bedrock there, it was essentially a straight shot to the fortress. I broke bedrock several times with no luck of netherrack underneath. Now, I know I probably should have just gone to the fortress and make my way to the top of the nether instead, but you know what? Anyways, I kind of got frustrated and maybe went to another world of the exact same seed and went to the exact same coordinates in creative mode to see which bedrock block had netherrack underneath it. But who knows, am I right? Whoa, what luck finding netherrack underneath that bedrock, huh? Wow, moving on. I wanted to build a maze with a fountain near my house, so I did just that. I built it out of cherry leaves because duh, and honestly, it's such a vibe. Once I did that though, I fully powered another beacon and put on speed two so I could run around Skyguard faster. I also moved the other beacon to the other side so I would have the effect on me more often because I spent more time on that side of the island anyways. After just a bit of trading and mining, I got started on my next building project, an end ring. Basically, I was just going to connect all the end portals and make one big ring out of it. I wouldn't do it all at once though, no sir. Instead, I would add two more portals to the ring every so often and eventually it would be completed. Next thing I did was add more decorations to Skyguard. You know, doing the light post, doing the yard work, moving my armor stands. Rather dull things to sit and talk about, but they make a big difference to the aesthetic. After the decorating break, we added two more portals to the end ring and then I took quite a bit of a trip to the nether. 
I needed two more beacons, which meant that I needed six more skulls, and as you can imagine, it took quite a while, but eventually we got the six that we needed, and I felt so happy, because there wasn't really a need for me to return to the nether anymore. Everything I needed, I had. Once I got back to Skyguard, I made some potions in preparation for the wither fights, and then I destroyed those withers. Easy peasy D's nuts. Anyways, after returning home from the fights, I ended day 22 there. Day 23, man. I should mention that in between day 22 and day 23, I went AFK at the gas farm for a while, so we had quite a bit of gunpowder at our disposal. Before we go off to nuke the world, I wanted to add two more portals to the end ring, slowly but surely making progress. After adding two portals, I set off to the nether to blow it up with all the gunpowder. There wasn't a need for me to go out and get ancient debris, but I wanted all four of my decorative armor sets to be netherite, so in a way, I do need ancient debris. We actually ended up getting a lot of ancient debris, to our standards anyways. But we deadass had enough to turn a whole nother diamond set into netherite, so we were already halfway done with upgrading them. After the nether adventure, we go off to find terracotta as I wanted to use it in a different building project. A statue of myself on Skyguard. You know, since I like built it. Not too long after getting everything I needed, I started to build the statue, but then quickly realized that I should add another two portals to the end ring, and so I did just that. Then I went back to building the statue, but I needed more wool for my sheep, so while I was waiting for cooldowns to reset, I went around Skyguard and made legal documents on all of the buildings and the villagers. I gave them names and wrote down which houses had which jobs, that kind of stuff. Then I added another two portals to the end ring, and then ended day. Day 23 there. Day 24. I went AFK at the gas farm again in between streams, so we start day 24 by blowing up more of the nether in search of ancient debris. Our haul wasn't quite as good this time around though, but we were only missing one piece for a full set, so not too bad. After all the destroying, I wanted to build, so I added two more portals to our end ring. Then I made a shortcut to the stronghold so I wouldn't have to fly there all the time. Nether highway, bitches. Once I did that, I went back to building my statue since I kinda had everything I needed to finish it. I think it looks pretty good, but that's just me. Literally. It's, it's literally me. <laughs> it's literally me. Who is that guy? It's literally me. After looking at myself for a while, I went back to being productive and added another two portals to the end ring. At this point, however, I had run into a bit of a problem. You see, I was kind of running out of ideas to keep this series going for a full 30 days, so I decided to try and do a wacky project that would take me a while to finish. That wild project is monument training. It is something I have never done before, and I was ready for the challenge. Now, the me that's talking right now knows how awful this project actually was, and I never want to drain a monument ever again. But yes, I spent several hours just outlining the thing with sand, and yes, in the middle of outlining the monument, I added two more portals to the end ring. If this makes it seem like I didn't do a whole lot this stream, it was six and a half hours long. It just took me that long. Anyways, once I had the monument outlined, I ended day 24 there. Day 25. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you guys, we've entered the final stretch, and the reason why I say that is because from here on out, we're pretty much just gathering resources for building, or we're building. We did finish the normal end ring, but now I was going to split the end into four corners, each with a different biome. Not the entire end, just like the circle within the end ring, that, that circle. I'm gonna split it into four corners. Got it? Alright, cool. But yeah, there's not really anything exciting or dramatic or super haha -ha funny moments until the final day. And since this video is getting kind of long, here's a quick montage of our progress through the next few streams.
Hello, me again. I think I should inform you of something. The end ship that I had built in the end, I built it off camera, but only because I had to follow a tutorial and I did not want to stream me following a tutorial. I hope you can understand that. Now as to the rest of day 29, not only did I finish draining the exterior of the monument, but I completely drained the interior too. It sucked really bad. And I'm never going to drain a monument again. I wasn't even going to do anything with it. Why? Afterwards though, I outlined the sections of the last biome and quickly realized that this was not thought out too well. You see, I wanted my last biome to be the overworld biome, so I'm using grass blocks, which endermen can pick up. In fact, I think more endermen started showing up because I was placing grass blocks. Either way, I would just have to deal with the fact that this section would never be 100% complete because there will always be a grass block missing. I could technically turn mob griefing off, but it's hardcore. Come on now. Anyways, once I outlined the sections, I ended day 29 there. Day 30 Final day. My frustrations with the Endermen did not go away overnight, unfortunately. They were making this section the worst one to do by far. I eventually adapted to the mindset that I will just do the best that I can do and the Endermen can take it upon themselves to decorate the place however they want. It is their home after all. But after all the frustrating hours, I eventually got it done. Four corners, overworld end, nether, and deep dark. All done. Isn't it beautiful? Dude, that looks so pretty. I hate seeing all the grass blocks like load in here though. Then I may or may not have used commands to find a buried trail or whatever it's called. It was the last stream, okay? Don't judge me for using commands. Afterwards, I moved all the beacons to Skyguard and finally finished that too. Then I basically just toured my world. The first village, my first base, the first trading hub, the first farms, Skyguard, all the houses, my maze, my statue, my armor sets, the monument that I drained, my nether highway, my gas farm. Honestly though, my favorite thing, the end. Hey, it's me. Before you go, please consider subscribing, especially if you want to catch these live. I'm thinking of doing a modded hardcore 30 day series, but I haven't fully decided yet. Also, this video took me a really long time to make, and I'm sorry for those who have been waiting so patiently, but I've had several things happen, so I was a bit out of it for a while, but I'm here, and I should be back to streaming soon, so thanks for watching. See ya!